let's move on to the, the red wine uh, and get into this uh, this three animal yeah. cheese right here. Absolutely. We're 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 blending and we're we're making a, we're making a, we're making a mockery of <laughs> evolution here by blending all these animals together. But uh, why don't you tell us about uh, this one here? Vino Tinto. Vin um, Vino well, Tinto. That's, yeah, that's a blended wine um, as well. So we have a blended wine with a blended cheese. Excellent. Um, so Vino Tinto just means uh, red wine uh, in Portuguese. And we're using uh, varieties, again, that are more or less uh, indigenous to the Douro Valley area of Portugal. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's interesting. Um, Portugal, known for their port wines... But at the same time, knowing that the port internationally, the, the, the port industry is somewhat, or the fortified wine industry, it, it's kind of stagnant. I mean, there's been very little growth in it. Most of the growth has been in the table wine industry internationally. And so recognizing this, uh, a lot of the uh, port producers have started making table wine from the same grapes that they've been making port from. With, with very, very exciting results. This is and, very um, so Just on the nose right here, this is... We're kind of pattering this wine off of that. And um, like I say, you think of these grapes as fortified style wine grapes, but in reality, um, they make some pretty exciting table wine as well. And this one I'm reading off the bottle here is Tempranillo again. That, Tempranillo that, that or Tempranillo, yes, it goes by either. Uh, Turiga, Turiga Nacional, which is probably the premier um, grape of the Douro Valley. Um, Tintacao and Suzao are the other two uh, that make up this part of this blend. And we use these same varieties when we're working with our port made from those Portuguese varieties. Right, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of Tempranillo. I like the, I just like the, the softness of it. Uh, there's, there's always a nice fruit to it, but it's, it's not... It's not a fruit bomb like mm -hmm. some of the wines that uh, are made in the, especially in the northern part of, of our wine region here. Um, but this one has a nice dry dryness and even finish to it. Uh, I will. All of our grapes, uh, except for maybe the Muscat in that uh, white port, um, is is West Side Pass Robles. I'm a West Side Pass Robles guy. I've mm -hmm. cut my teeth um, through my winemaking career in that area. Um, our property uh, is uh, is in the Templeton area. Um, my grower relationships are largely um, in that area with people that I've known for a long period of time. Um, I like the region. I like the winemaking potential there. I know the soils, so I can walk on a piece of property and know whether it's got potential to grow some yeah. great grapes or not. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that that, that plays into... The style of wine, the wines from that area are are a little bit um, uh, a little bit tighter um, and a little bit more structured. Yeah, yeah. And not quite as open and fruit forward. Yeah. Um, and in a way, I think that bodes well for the aging of, of the wine. Very, very much so. Yeah. And I think people who are sommeliers in this area could sit down and go west side and east side. And it, um, you really, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's a political football. But, sure, um, sure, sure. Yeah. You know, but I think that um, uh, I think that there are very much distinctions. Very much so. Okay, so back to the three animal cheese here. Right. We've got sheep, goat, and cow. cow here, and this one is called Iberico. And I think it's interesting. It, um, Steve was referring to the grapes coming from the Iberian Peninsula. This is a Spanish Manchego cheese that is coming from that region. I mean, it's a three milk cheese. It's called Iberico. Um, it's fairly mild at this point. Um, it's around six to eight months old. And I think it's an interesting pairing with this wine because this wine, like you said, isn't a fruit bomb. So this cheese is a great cheese to pair with a wine like this. It's a little bit spicy on the finish. The cheese is a little bit spicy on the finish, but fairly mild, but still has that level of complexity with the three milks in it that um, I think really, really lend to this wine. I think it's a wonderful pairing. And remember, it's wine, cheese, wine. Exactly. And it's okay to swirl it all and chew with your mouth open and everything. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing tonight. Mm. And there is, yeah, there is a little kick to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of spiciness to these varieties, too, as a whole. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Tempranillo with spicy food. 
I think, you know, it just seems to go with a, like a spicy shrimp taco of some kind or, you know, just. A lot of a, the Latin foods it does. Yeah, yeah. Well with all of them. Exactly. Yeah, I think we're, we're kind of finding our, there's there's a lot of tempranillo, there, well, no, there aren't, there isn't that much tempranillo that's in the ground right now, but you're starting to see more acreage being devoted to it, growers wanting to try growing it. It's not that easy of a grape to grow. And um, I think that we're still kind of fine-tuning a little bit about what are the best sites and how to work with it. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit excited because this coming season, I'll be getting um, the first of some dry-farmed Tempranillo, which for me, I look at the way Tempranillo grows and it reminds me a lot of the way young Zinfandel grows. And um, I love the kind of flavors that you get from dry farms in. And I really think that uh, Tempranillo may lend itself to those kind of viticultural practices. That'll be exciting to yeah. try that. That'll be exciting to try that. I want to remind you, you can submit chat questions at CitrusCoastLive.com. We've got the little chat window right there. And uh, as we get ready to move into uh, ports, uh, well, two, two things. One, that is still sort of lingering and still mm -hmm. working right there, isn't mm -hmm. it? That has got a it's long, a long sharpness, finish. Yeah. That's yeah. what we call the roller coaster because you, you went wine for a while, then it went back to cheese, it went back to wine. It's, it's a really interesting yeah. progression, and if you just hang on to it and let it go, it just keeps going. It's fun. The one, the one negative thing about this show is that we have to move through the wines, and we could just sit here and drink yeah. each of these <laughs> bottles, but really to spare those watching at home uh, uh, from watching us drink six bottles of wine in front of them, we are going to move on. <laughs>